What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to create an elevator. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. But first, if you are serious about learning and making your first game in Unreal Engine 5, join my Unreal Club. Inside, you will be able to download entire private files from my tutorials, enter private meetings and webinars with industry experts, access exclusive ebooks packed with the best tricks, get powerful asset frameworks to speed up your blueprints, and much more. The link is in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. All right, so first of all, let's go into the content browser, right click and create a new blueprint class. In this case, it's going to be an actor. Let's call this something as BP underscore elevator and open this up. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a new static mesh, which will be the model itself. And what I did was download this free elevator model from Sketchpad. But of course, you can use whatever model you want. So let me go ahead and drag this new blueprint class and there we go. Now I'm going to make it just a bit bigger. So with this selected and unlock, I'm going to put it like 1.2 and then unlock it. And then for the height, 1.35, it's a bit taller. And there we go. We have this new elevator where I can enter and exit. But of course, nothing happens. Now, here's where the actual tutorial comes. How can we make it go up and down once we enter in the elevator? So first of all, let's go ahead and just make it go up, all right? So let's go to the event graph, delete all of this, and from the begin play, add a new timeline. A timeline will allow us to transition between one location to another after a few couple seconds. So let's just put elevator up. And now let's go ahead and double click to open this up. So first of all, we need to specify the length of this, you know, transition of this animation of the elevator going up. Let's put in yeah, I think three will be good for now. Actually, let's do it on five. Let's add a float track, which will be the elevator height. And we will create a new key, which the first one's gonna have a time of zero and a value of zero. And then the second key is gonna be at five, which is where the animation ends, and then value of one, because we always want to go from zero to one. So if I go ahead and click these two icons, we can see that the elevator will just go from one point into another, okay? Smoothly at a constant speed, right? And of course you can play around with that as you want. But now on here on the event graph, as you can see, we have this new output, which is the elevator height. This means that now we can get our model and set the actor location. Uh, well, in this case, it's not an actor, it's a component, so set uh, world or relative in this case i prefer to do relative location that way the model will stay where it is in the world but just go up and down right so what we can do is get a lerp from the elevator height for a vector because of course we want to play around with a new location of type vector so by default it's gonna just stay where it is right now which is on the zero 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 but then for b was gonna finish at maybe like 1000 of height or even 2000, right? And as you can see, the only axis that is going to change is gonna be the Z, which is up and down, right? And we can see the elevator height is the alpha, so it will go from A to B in five seconds with this linear curve. Now we can just plug this here, compile, save, and I press play, you will see that elevator goes up pretty high. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just decrease this maybe just a bit to a thousand or whatever of course you can play around with the timings and all that kind of stuff that's pretty good so now let's go ahead and make sure that it will only go up once we enter into the elevator so for this we need to add a new component which is going to be a trigger so we go ahead select the model and add a new collision this is going to be a box collision and this is going to be the trigger, right? Or the door trigger, or whatever you want to name it. So let's go ahead and just put this kind of at the front door, extend it with these values over here. I'm going to make it thinner, but taller. And just overall, not very accurately, but just overall, just place it on the door. Okay, so the third enters, we will go through here. Now make sure that you have the collision preset as overlap, so the player can go inside and go through it, but the collision will still be detected. And now you can see that we have a whole bunch of different events 
we can select the on component begin overlap, which is when something enters. And if this other actor has the tag player, we can go ahead and continue. Because of course, imagine that an enemy or any other actor, you know, goes into the elevator trigger by mistake, right? We only want to make sure that it's the player. Now, of course, we need to make sure that the player has this tag. So for this, let's open up the third person character blueprint or whatever character blueprint you're using. Go to class defaults, search for a tag, actor tag, and just put in player. Now make sure that it's spelled exactly the same as in here. And now with that said, what we can simply do is call this play, right? Unplug it from the begin play, put it here, and that's it. You can now go ahead, enter, and boom. Now we of course want to add a bit of a better feedback and a smoother transition. So let's add a little delay. And this can be whatever you guys want. In my case, I think 0.35 or something like that will be more than enough. So I enter and there we go. Maybe even 0.5 will be a good number. But yeah, you can play around again with all of these values, right? So you get exactly what you're looking for. But of course, now once we enter into the elevator, go up and then reach the destination, we're kind of stuck here. Of course, if we had another level, you would go out, but we want to go ahead and make sure that the elevator goes down once again. So what we can do is two things. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can make it that once it reaches the destination, right, on the finished, it will simply wait two seconds and go down. Or we could also make it where the player exits, right? And it will simply go down regardless of anything. So we can just do this. Right, the same. So an end overlap. Um, and then simply connect this to the reverse. So it will go ahead and do the opposite. Now, very important for this to work, we have to make sure that the trigger covers the depth of the elevator. Because otherwise, as soon as we enter, we would also exit. So we want to keep this kind of like this, maybe even a bit bigger just in case, okay? And that's it. So if I go ahead and enter into the elevator, we go up, I'm going to go ahead and just wait a couple seconds until we reach the destination. Then once I jump, the elevator goes back down, as you can see, into the floor. And then I could enter again and go back up, which is working just perfectly fine. So I could, of course, simply create another floor upwards right a bit thinner a bit smaller and i could reach the destination but of course that's the thing that you guys can do but that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel you can download the private files through my unreal club so i will link it in the description and now yes with all i said bye bye